Imagine living in a time where drinking a glass of milk could be like playing Russian roulette. Yeah, not a fun time to be living in if milk was your favorite drink. Well, if we go back in history, not too long, I am talking about less than 200 years ago, people were not able to trust milk consumption 100%. For most of human history, the food you ate came from your immediate local area, and you would have to gobble it before it spoiled. But how could they be sure if their food was fresh or spoiled? Eating or drinking was a bit of a guessing game that could potentially result in death or disease. Fortunately, today we can walk into a supermarket almost anywhere in the world and be confident that the food there is safe to eat. We got to this point thanks to many food preservation techniques that allowed us to safely store and distribute food. Pasteurization is one of the discoveries that changed the way we consume food, especially milk. So we can now drink milk with some peace of mind but we might still die in other ways. Now in this video, I want to explore what pasteurization is and why it has saved so many lives. Let's first go back in time to the 1800s when eating food was risky business and people believe that germs can spontaneously appear in it. Louis Pasteur, a French chemist and microbiologist at the time, was fed up with the ordeal. He was part of a very small group of people that believed fermentation occurred because of microorganisms taking hold. And he was determined to prove this by conducting a series of experiments. When bacteria grow in wine, it can sour and essentially turn the wine into vinegar. Pasteur discovered that if you heat wine to a temperature between 60 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius, you can kill unwanted microorganisms without affecting the wine's taste. He conducted his first successful test in 1862, and later went on to patent this method that we now call pasteurization. Not the most appealing name, I know, but I guess it's cool to have your name associated with something that will change people's lives, right? Pasteur's experiments were also instrumental in establishing the germ theory. He managed to disprove the idea that infection is spontaneous. Yeah, we used to believe that germs would magically appear from nowhere and spoil things. He contradicted that idea by proving that microorganisms wouldn't develop without contamination. In one of the experiments, he used what became his famous swan neck flasks, to demonstrate that if atmospheric air was excluded from boiled infusions, then no living microorganism would appear even after months of observation. However, if atmospheric dust were then introduced, living microbes would appear within two to three days. Now, let's go back to pasteurization. So pasteurization is essentially a physical preservation technique in which food is heated up to a specific temperature to destroy microorganisms and enzymes that can spoil food. But why and how does pasteurization work? We know that cooking kills yeast, mold, and bacteria, so why can't cooking alone be used as a food preservation technique? Well, cooking destroys the most unwanted germs, but it alters food's composition. Pasteurization, on the other hand, destroys most yeasts and molds in food without causing substances in food to change. Different foods are pasteurized in different ways, and food's acidity can determine the time and temperature used in the process of pasteurization. For example, an orange juice, which is quite acidic, with a pH of about 3.5, we typically use high temperatures of 95 to 98 degrees Celsius for 10 to 30 seconds. Since fruit juice usually has a high acidity, microorganisms can't usually grow in it. Therefore, pasteurization is mainly done to inactivate unwanted enzymes from the fruit that might lead to shorter shelf lives. In milk, the most commonly pasteurized food would typically heat the milk to around 60 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. 
However, even with milk, there are different pasteurization methods. We can also heat milk to 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. And in ultra high temperature or UHT milk, we go even higher and heat the milk to 140 degrees Celsius for two to three seconds. But why do we do that? Put simply, the hotter the temperature, the longer the milk lasts. Milk pasteurized at 72 degrees Celsius will last one to two weeks longer than milk pasteurized at 60 degrees Celsius. And UHD milk can last for months. Milk is the most common food or drink that comes to mind when we think of pasteurization, like I just mentioned. However, today we actually pasteurize many food products to ensure they are safe for consumption or last longer. For example, cheese. Some cheeses are made from unpasteurized or raw milk and then aged to impart a specific flavor. Have you ever tried cheddar, brie, or camembert cheese? Well, they are pasteurized cheeses. Even though throughout much of Europe, raw milk cheeses are allowed, albeit with some restrictions and specific laws, France is somewhat of a powerhouse when it comes to producing raw milk cheeses, with many of the world's most popular cheeses coming hailing from the region. However, even in France, the issue is starting to become controversial. These cheeses carry pathogenic bacteria like Salmonella, Listeria, and E. coli, which can make you ill in high enough quantities, or if you have a weakened immune system. In 2020, these cheeses were removed from the menu in places serving food to children under five, with experts claiming that young people are 110 times more likely to become ill than adults. In the US, cheeses made from unpasteurized milk are heavily restricted due to the Food and Drug Administration's guidelines on acceptable bacterial levels in food. Now this one may surprise you, but did you know that we also pasteurize honey? We do that to extend its shelf life rather than make it safer. The pasteurization process slows down granulation, making the honey smoother for longer. Since honey has very low moisture content and high acidity, it's almost impossible for bacteria to thrive in honey. However, the pasteurization process is often accompanied by filtration, which some people argue makes honey less nutrient rich. For example, processing honey this way often removes the pollen that is usually found in honey. Most countries don't have laws or requirements around pasteurizing honey. Now, if you have ever baked a cake, you've probably stuck your finger in the batter and got a taste of it before you threw the cake in the oven or got a bite of that raw cookie though, that can be so yummy. If you didn't feel sick after that, consider yourself lucky. Cake batter and cookie dough contain raw eggs, which can be unsafe. Beyond sneaking a few spoonfuls of cake batter, some recipes require raw eggs. Some bodybuilders also eat raw eggs to get a protein boost. Most people will be okay eating raw eggs, but pregnant women, the elderly, small children, or other people with weakened immune system may be safer eating pasteurized eggs. It's worth noting, however, that there is a trade-off here. While pasteurized eggs are safer, they tend to taste very different. They're also not ideal for recipes that require you to whip egg whites into stiff beaks because the pasteurization process affects the ability of proteins in egg whites to make them meringue worthy. Okay, those were just a few examples of things you have in your pantry or fridge that have gone through pasteurization. Now, every time you look at that milk carton, you know that it did not come straight from the cow. Someone actually had to discover a technique to kill harmful germs and give you some peace of mind while you eat cereal in the morning. That is it for this video. Tell me in the comments what other topics you would like me to cover in this channel. Like the video so you tell me and YouTube you want to watch more of these. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next upload. See you next time.